I'd like to welcome you all to our Verbum Day online retreat. I am James McTavish, a Verbum Day missionary. And in this week ahead, this week of Holy Week, culminating in the Tridium, the celebration of the Lord's Passion, Death and Resurrection, Verbum Day will be offering a series of guidelines of prayer and homilies given by different Verbum Day missionaries. We will be following Jesus on his journey from Palm Sunday as he walks into the Holy Week to his suffering and death on Calvary and we will wait patiently with Mother Mary for his resurrection. The theme of our online retreat is that they may be one. These are the words of Jesus in John 17, verse 21. And this is the desire of God. He wants oneness and unity among us. He wants us to be one and united with Him. And He wants us to be one and united to each other. And this is part of our Verbum Day spirituality. 
In Constitutions 51, it says, The intimate union of the Apostle with Christ will make him or her feel vitally linked with all his or her brothers and sisters with bonds stronger than those of flesh and blood. So let us ask at the beginning of this retreat for that gift of oneness. It's really a gift. And we can ask for that gift. And I know that in this time we have all felt more united. We've been united in trying to confront this pandemic of coronavirus. We have been one in suffering. It doesn't matter whether you are rich or poor, in the first world, the developing world, every person has been affected and we know people who've been affected by the virus also. But we've also grown in this sense of solidarity, oneness, unity and support. So let's go deeper in this unity and oneness and allow the Word of God to guide us as we enter into Holy Week. And this is the desire of Jesus, that really we can be united with Him in this week ahead. Not just like an external union or companionship or just being with Him. Sometimes we can be like a spectator watching from the outside. But how different it is to walk with Jesus, to be with Him, to ask the Lord, how are you in the different moments of His journey? And we can understand how the Lord feels through the Word of God. The Word of God helps us, it guides us, it gives us light. And we can enter into the thoughts, the feelings of Jesus through the Word of God. For example, today, Jesus enters into Jerusalem. And just by our own thoughts, we might imagine that a God would enter into the city with pomp and ceremony and an external display of power. But, as St. Jerome said, ignorance of Scripture is ignorance of Christ. And we don't need to make things up. We have the Word of God. We have the text of the readings. We have the Gospel. And in the readings of this day for Palm Sunday, we see how Jesus enters into the city in a lowly way, in a meek way, riding on a young donkey. So Jesus, teach us how to walk with you, to be united with you. We don't want to be spectators watching you from the outside, but we want to be with you, one with you on your journey in your journey to Calvary, in your journey to the Resurrection. Because it's not only to die with Him, but it's to rise with Him. Easter is not only Good Friday, it should lead us to Easter Sunday. And we'll also be invited in these days ahead to contemplate, to let the Word of God do the work, to experience the loving gaze of God. In Psalm 34, 4 to 6, it says, I sought the Lord and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This is a beautiful image of contemplation, to look at the Lord and to experience His loving gaze. And in some moments of our prayer this week, there will not be so many words. Perhaps it's an invite to savour the silence, to enter into the mystery, knowing that God works in the silence. And to have this profound reverence in front of what's happening to the Lord and to have that faith that God is working and we have that faith we know that the word is working we know the word is alive and active Hebrews 4 verse 12 the word of God is alive and active 
And God's word working in us can do so much more than we can ever ask for or even imagine. So let's ask for this gift of openness. Openness to the mystery of Christ's life. Open to the mystery of his suffering, death and resurrection. And in terms of this invite to be open, I was very helped by the readings for this Palm Sunday. And we know that on Palm Sunday, the readings begin with the procession with palms. And the Gospel is Matthew 21, 1 to 11. And we also have Isaiah 50, verses 4 to 7. Later, we'll also have a longer gospel text. After the procession and entrance, we have the Passion account. And we will have different moments during this week to deepen on the Passion. And what helped me a lot in my prayer was praying with Isaiah 50, 4-7, when it says, Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And this phrase, morning after morning was echoing in my heart and it speaks to me of constancy it speaks to me of consistency and that's important during a retreat to have a fixed time of prayer to have a fixed length of prayer and this morning after morning reminds us that we don't just totally understand the whole mystery in one day. It's not like that. But it's to persevere. It's to persevere, not just to reach Calvary with Jesus, but to go beyond, to reach the gift of Easter Sunday and the resurrection. Morning after morning, to persevere, to endure, and to be open to the surprise of God's revelation. And of course, this revelation is called to overflow into our lives. And that was part of the message of Pope Francis in his recent Urbi et Orbi address. And in one moment of his homily, he shared that in the face of so much suffering, we experience the priestly prayer of Jesus, that they may be one. How many people every day are exercising patience and offering hope, taking care to sow not panic, but a shared responsibility. And in that homily, he remarked that prayer is one of our victorious weapons. And that's why it's so beautiful to have an online retreat, that even in the middle of this difficult situation, we can be one in prayer. The reading of Isaiah 50, 4-7 continues, I have not rebelled, have not turned back. How great to have that openness to pray during this week. And God will help us. He will help us to pray, to be one with Him. In, in Isaiah 50, verse 4, it says, He has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. And how many people are experiencing weariness, even ourselves sometimes, weary with the worry, the concerns, the anxiety about the virus. But part of our work, part of our mission, is to have that well-trained tongue, to know how to speak to the weary. And that training is the prayer each day. When I'm listening to words that encourage me, when I'm listening to words from the Lord that animate me and give me strength, then I'm more able to share these words to others and to help them. And that's what the Lord wants us to do during this time. He wants to reassure us when we're going through difficulties and challenges that, hey, my friend, I went through this before you. I've been through it all. 
You will have trouble in the world, but be brave. I have conquered the world. John 16:33. And those are not just words. Jesus backs up his words with his life. He suffered, he endured, he was brave, and he's telling us, "You will have trouble in the world. Like expect it, but be brave, because I have conquered the world." And you know that when someone speaks to you who's been through an experience, it really can be reassuring. I remember once when I was working as a doctor on the orthopedic unit. And this unit specialized in back problems and back injuries, so we saw a lot of spinal patients. And there was one boy who was 12 years old, and he was going to have an operation. The operation was a fusion, a fusion of the lower part of his back, the lumbar vertebrae, to the next section, which is called the sacrum. So he was going to have a lumbosacral fusion. Then he was very worried and very concerned about his operation, understandably, and no one could reassure him. So, who did they send to reassure him? Me. Why? When I went to speak to the boy, I said to him, "No, you'll be fine." And he said, "No, I don't think so. Yes, you'll be okay. You'll get through the experience. How do you know?" And in that moment, he was with his dad. I said, "Can I tell you a secret?" He said, "What is it?" I said, two months ago, I myself had a lumbosacral fusion. I had the same operation that you're going to have tomorrow.、And、he said to me, "No way!" And I said, "Way? Yes." He said, "Really?" Of course, he was amazed because I was standing talking to him. So his dad was there, and he said, "Really? Did you have the operation?" I said, "Look, I'll show you the scar." And I showed the dad and the boy my scar on my back, and of course, the boy was so amazed, and he was so encouraged and so reassured, and I was able to reassure because I had been through it. And the Lord can reassure, can encourage us because He's been through suffering, death, and resurrection, and He asks us to accompany Him, to accompany Him closely, to learn from Him. And like I said, not just as an external viewer or spectator. Maybe many times we've lived the Holy Week experience with different celebrations. Maybe, maybe in an external way, participating in an external event. And these are not bad; they can help us. But this Holy Week is going to be different. We'll not be able to do the typical. Things that perhaps we would celebrate the Holy Week with before, but the Lord is inviting us. He's inviting us to live it in a new way, to walk through the events of His Passion, Death, and Resurrection with Him. And that's what the Lord's saying. I want you to be with Me, in Me, united to Me. May you be one with My intention, because everything I'm doing is for you and your salvation. And that's why in Isaiah fifty, verse seven, it says, "The Lord God is my help; therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame." The Lord God is our help, and He really wants to teach us this week. Lord, make me attentive to Your words. Lord, help us to be attentive to Your gestures. Help us to walk this Holy Week with you, to be one with you, because the more one we are with you, the more one we are with all of our brothers and sisters. And of course, to walk with the Lord, not only do we need openness, we also need humility. The Lord's ways are different from our ways, and. He enters into Jerusalem, as we shared, not with pomp and external ceremony, but in a humble way, riding on a young donkey. And of course, Jesus is showing us that that humility is essential, because during his week ahead, there's going to be so many traps, so many taunts, so many provocations, so many negative comments. 
so many difficult attitudes of the people for Jesus to deal with, then how does he deal with it? Like getting down. He gets down, he stays low. He empties himself. This is called the kenosis or kenosis. The self emptying of Jesus. And this invites us to be humble, not to ah, I already know what happens in Holy Week. I watched the end of the movie already. If we don't have humility, we will not grasp anything. And of course, one of the most profound gestures of humility is to pray. To realize that on my own, I cannot make it, I cannot do it. And in one homily for this day, one saint called Saint Andrew of Crete, he said, Let's not put palms beneath his feet, but put ourselves. Let's not put palms beneath his feet, but put ourselves. When we are humble, we also recognize our inconsistencies. We realize we are like the crowd that one day is shouting, Hosanna! Hosanna! And then, later in the week, crucify him! Crucify him! Sometimes we have some people that we praise and Lord, and later when they upset us, we want to like crucify them. We have many inconsistencies. It's like the students. Father, please pray for us. Please pray for our board exam. It's this, this after this weekend. Then they pray, Diosco, Diosco. And then after they pass the exam, no longer Diosco, but Disco, Disco. Sometimes we are like that. We forget the Lord in times of prosperity. And then when the difficulties come, we run to him. But the Lord is also merciful and he knows our weaknesses and he knows our limits. And Jesus in the middle of this like changing tides of public opinion, changing attitudes of the crowd, the provocations, Jesus strives to be one with the Father. That is the source of his strength, this unity with the Father not on the prevailing opinion of the others or of the crowd, because it's so changeable. So let's be grateful that we have this chance to walk with the Lord. And that is another symbolism of the palm. The palm is a symbol of joy to welcome a king. To be joyful in front of God, the palms are waved. Leviticus 23 verse 40. Leviticus 23 verse 40. So let's ask the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary in this week ahead. Let's ask that gift that we can walk with Jesus, not just viewing the events as a spectator in an external way, but allowing the richness of the Word of God to fill us from within, to know how Jesus is living the events, to feel the moments with him, to really be one with him. Let's also ask for that grace of humility, to also empty ourselves of appearances, of inconsistency, of hypocrisy, so that we can be more firmly united to the Lord. And let's ask Mother Mary this gift of gratitude also. Thank you, Mother Mary, for helping us during this week to stay close to your son. Amen.